Hello, welcome back to my kitchen. Today I am making some biscotti. I decided to go with a vanilla almond chocolate cranberry flavor. I haven't tried this before. I have made biscotti before, but I haven't made this flavor exactly like this. Um, so hopefully it goes well and maybe you wanna give it a try. What I'm doing, I've added in two cups of flour, a teaspoon and a half of baking powder, three quarters of a cup of sugar, and all of my delicious fillings, which hopefully they taste good. There we go. It's about, it's supposed to be three quarters of a cup. I did about a cup of that. So there we go. We're gonna mix all of those ingredients together before we get into any wet ingredients. And here we go. Done. So you just wanna get them quickly combined. It's not anything that's, um, too difficult. There you go. You can take a look. Okay. And now I'm going to add in three eggs and some vanilla and almond extract. Uh, the recipe does not call for any almond extract. It only ever calls for vanilla, but I thought I have this ingredient. I love this ingredient. Let's put it in there. And I decided to make biscotti today because I'm home with two sick kids. And this is a recipe. It's very easy but it, it does take some time because you have to double bake biscotti. That's how they get crunchy. Okay, so there are my three eggs. I'm going to add in, now the recipe calls for two and a half teaspoons of vanilla. I always measure vanilla with my heart. So there we go, a bunch of vanilla. Oops, and some almond extract. And probably about a half teaspoon of almond extract is, is plenty, I think you can see that. So I'm going to, oops, that fell a little bit. We're gonna close it, lock it. I always forget to lock the stand mixer and mix it up. Okay, so that mix, it took about a minute in the stand mixer. I often have done this by hand, but I've got the mixer and I like to use it. Uh, I'm just going to scoop this off before I show it to you so you can get a, an idea of the texture. This is a very sticky dough. You saw the only liquid in here is the are the extracts and the eggs. Um, but it's meant to be sticky and it turns out really well when you're done. I don't like to waste any of the good stuff. I don't mind wasting a little bit of the dough, but I want all of those fillings in there. Okay. Oops. I always forget to do the back side. Okay, so I'm just going to pop that off quickly so you can take a closer look at this. Okay, here we go. Mm, there we are. You can see it's very sticky. I'm going to form it into a ball. Let me do that. I'm right-handed and I just use my right hand on the camera. That doesn't work very well. So I'm just going to very quickly scoop all this batter in together. And if you are doing this by hand, you want to do it with the spatula. This kind of a spatula works perfectly. Okay, so there we go. So you can see everything's combined. There's there's no white flour stuck to the sides of the bowl. And now we're gonna take this and transfer it onto our lined baking sheet. Okay, so what I've done, I've transferred this to my lined baking sheet. I'm going to um, cut it in half and then form it into two evenly sized logs. The reason they need to be even is because you are baking them together. And if one is bigger than the other, they won't cook the right way. Okay, oh, I forgot to take my ring off. Don't forget to take off your ring when you're working with a sticky dough. So you're gonna take your two pieces, separate them out, and I'm just gonna press it into um, about 10 inches by three inches. Uh, if you make them a little bit, they will grow. So if you make them a little bit bigger than that, that's okay, smaller than that, it's okay. But just know that whatever size you make them, they won't stay that way. They do grow quite a bit in the oven. Um, and I, this has always been the part that I struggle with the most because I always try to get it exactly perfect. I want them to be identical. I want to make sure my, bis <sighs> I go a little bit crazy with how in my head sometimes how, how perfect I want it to be. So look, you can see, I didn't actually cut that in half perfectly gonna be okay what I'm gonna do because I want them to cook evenly you see is I'm just gonna spread this one out a little bit more 
by all means do this with a spatula it is a really sticky dough um, you don't have to be quite you don't have to get so messy with it um, I'm in the mood for it today which is why it's okay so as long as their thickness is the same that's what you want uh, the, the the length isn't gonna be a huge barrier later I will try to stretch that one out a little bit and you know you're gonna see I've made this one is only about three inches this one's about four inches we'll, we'll see how it goes okay I had to run off because there was a, a paint accident in the basement I'm back now trying to remember where what I was saying anyhow so you can see these are not perfect they're roughly one of them is about the right size and you know what it doesn't matter you're gonna see once I bake them how it works um, I am gonna just not use my sticky hands anymore because clearly the one time that I have sticky hands, somebody needs me and I have to run to the basement with hands covered in sticky dough. Okay, those are about even. This one's a little bit thick. So I'm just going to spread it out. You can see it's a lot easier with the spatula to get it to move when it's not sticking to your fingers. Okay, there we go. I am going to pop that in the oven. I've got it preheated to 325. It's going to go in the oven for about 15 minutes, 10 to 15 minutes. I'll check on it. And then we're gonna let it cool completely, cut it up, put it back in the oven, and you're gonna see how it goes. Oops, I said cook them for 10 to 15 minutes. You're gonna bake them for 35 minutes this time around. Take a look at them. If I took them out now and it's been 10 minutes, that would be the wrong thing to do. So we're gonna come back and check on them in another 20, 25 minutes. All right, it's been uh, about 30 minutes and my oven runs hot. So these are pretty well, much cooked. You can see, and I will show you closer. Um, they're nice and golden all around, and that's what we want. So we're gonna take them out of the oven and just let them cool. There they are. Nice golden brown and ready to just hang out. All right, my biscotti have cooled, and now I'm just going to cut them up. So what you wanna do here is, uh, I'm gonna turn it sideways, it's gonna be a little easier for me. You're just gonna cut them, uh, let's see, about one inch thickness is, is good. Really, it's whatever size biscotti you want to eat. Um, sometimes I don't, I mean, I'm not very good at slicing things, so I don't always get it exactly the same, but do your best, make it, if you're making it for yourself, make it how you wanna eat it. And if you encounter a really hard almond, be there, make it a little bigger. I should have made that one bigger not to cut the almond in half would have been less work for me, but that's okay. Okay, so once you've got them sliced, there we go. I'm just going to spin this around and slice it. So how many biscotti do I have here so far? I was gonna count it and then I realized I'm still cutting and that will be dangerous. All right, just a few more. Getting crumbs everywhere. I love these silicon baking mats. They're so great. Not only are they environmentally friendly, but look at this, I can cut right on it. No more extra dishes, which I think is really great. Okay, you can see my biscotti. Well, I don't know if you can see, but they did get a little bit bigger towards the end there because I got tired of cutting. Okay, so now what I'm going to do just a moment, please. Okay, had to go help with some schoolwork. Okay, I do like this hybrid model. We are going to now, um, I, I've found that this works best. It takes, the recipe that I used um, to make this, these biscotti, it says that you should rebake them for, for 10 to 15 minutes. And I have found that that's not enough, but also that I like to spread them out because you want them to get crispy in the oven. And when they're close together, they don't have much of an opportunity to do that. So really just spread them out as best you can. It, it's, it's not a requirement. I don't believe it says that in the recipe, I'm not sure. These are a little bit stuck together, so I didn't slice all the way through. But I'm going to be kind to myself and it's okay. They smell incredible. They're going to taste good. And I'm making them for me. It doesn't have to be perfect. Life's not perfect and that's okay. All right, there we go. So I am going to put those back in the oven at 350 um, for how long? Well, I'm not exactly sure. I think I'm gonna do it for about 20 minutes and then I'll check on them and I will go from there. So let you see these. You can see they are not all, they're not perfect, but 
they look like biscotti. I've got normal size biscotti here, that small little loaf turned into sort of mini biscotti, which I'm okay with. Um, and yeah, so I, uh, I'll put them in the oven and then you'll see. All right, so it's been about 20 minutes uh, and my biscotti should be done. I'm just gonna pop them out of the oven and you can take a look. So there they are. Oh, it smells so good. Um, they're done, they're very nice and golden. They're hard, they're gonna be nice and crispy. We're gonna let them cool and then put them in a container and enjoy the next couple weeks. Thanks for stopping by, be kind to yourself and uh, see you next time.